Namaste. Today we'll be looking at the name which is in the 10th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. There are many names mentioned in the 10th chapter. In fact, 11th chapter also has a lot of names. Today's name has a combination of two very interesting things. One is the saulabhyam of our Lord. The saulabhyam means how affectionately he does something for us, how easily he is accessible to us. And the other is paratvam. Paratvam means the greatness of the Lord, the one who we cannot comprehend. So that is his paratvam, the greatness. So this name which we will be looking at today has a combination of both paratvam and the saulabhyam both in the same thing. So we will be looking at 10th chapter, 12th sloka and the name that we are looking today is the Adi Deva. Now this name is again repeated by Arjuna in the 11th chapter, 38th sloka. Param Brahma Parandhama Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashwatam Divyam Adi Devam Ajam Vibhum Ahustva Mrishaya Sarve Devarshin Naradas Tatha so in this sloka, Arjuna understands the greatness of Krishna because remember this is the 10th chapter. 10th chapter is where Krishna explains about himself, right? So Arjuna understands all that and he says, you are Param Brahma. You are the Parabrahma itself, you are the Parandama, you are, uh, you know, the completely auspicious person. You are Pavitra, you are the uh, Purana, Purusha, everything. And then he uses the term which we are looking for now, you are Adi Deva. So Adi Deva, what do we understand by the word Adi Deva is, Adi is the original, Deva means the Krida, right? So he does everything as a sport. So, the entire creation is done by the Lord as a sport. So, what do we understand by this is the Prapanja Srishti, there is no effort taken by the Lord. It is just by his Sankalpam. He wants to play, so therefore he is creating this Prapanja Srishti. So, has this happened anywhere? Arjuna explains this. We can understand this because the great seers have told us about this. So, he mentions a few great seers. He says, Sage Narada has mentioned this. So when did Sage Narada mention it? Remember, Praklada was in the womb of his mother and Devarishi Narada tells a lot of lovely stories, Upadesams to his mother and the baby who is still inside the womb observes all this knowledge and is born as a great Bhagavata. So we know about Praklada and all this is because of Sage Narada and Sage Narada knew that the Lord was the Adi Deva. Parabrahmam was no, none other than Lord Krishna. Arjuna also mentions a few other uh, sages in this loka. He says that the uh, sage Asita, Devala, everybody have understood it. And he says there are many other sages like this who have understood you. So all of them established that you are the Parabrahma, you are the Adi Deva. And he says, you yourself have also ascertained this to me. Because Krishna, starting from the fourth chapter, time and again has been establishing his paratvam to Arjuna. He has been explaining in no uncertain terms that, look, I take care of all these things. I protect my devotees. I am the ultimate. I am the cause of everything. Right? So Arjuna understands that and rightly addresses Lord Krishna as Adi Deva. So, we were saying that many of the sages have experienced it and therefore they are explaining this. So as an example for that, let us see the experience of sage Markandeya. Sage Markandeya's experience has been mentioned in uh, Mahabharata itself in the Vanaparva. It is also mentioned in Bhagavata Purana in the 12th Skanda. It is also mentioned in the Markandeya Purana itself. So what is this experience all about? Markandeya was a great Maharishi and this Maharishi wanted to have an experience of the Leelas of Lord Vishnu. So he was doing Dhyana meditation on the Lord and he requested the Lord, please grant me such a uh, thing where I can enjoy a great Leela of yours. So he says, I want to know your Maya. Maya means something which we will be astonished with. So the Lord says, so be it. And now the sage goes back to his ashram. His ashram is beside a beautiful river. 
Subhadra River and he's sitting there, he's contemplating on the Lord, on all his Kalyana Gunas, he's enjoying, he's in his Dhyana. And at such point of time, there is a dilanj, a pralaya is occurring. So what we mean by pralaya is the dissolution. Everything is going off at that point of time. Everything gets submerged in the water. So entire world, every being is now eaten off by the pralaya jalam. And uh, Markandeya Maharishi is seeing all that. What is happening? Everything is going off. In fact, he himself goes into the mouth of certain water beings and he seems to be thrown out again. He is swimming everywhere. It's such a frightful sight. He's not knowing what's happening. Once he reaches the top of the water, he's seeing a beautiful uh, banyan tree there. So he's surprised. Everything is now submerged in water, but this banyan tree seems to be outside of water. What is this? As he takes a closer look at it, He's saying there are many beautiful leaves in that. On one particular leaf, there is a little boy lying down there. He's surprised. How can this little boy lie here? And when he's admiring that little boy, the little boy seems to be like a lotus. He's filled with divinity. He's such a beautiful thing to see. In Bala Mukunda Ashtakam, we would see, right? Bhalam Mukundam Manasas Marami. So let me remember that Bala Mukundam. What kind of Bala Mukundam is that? He is the one who is lying on the uh, banyan leaf. Uh, Vatasya Putre Shayanam Bala Mukundam. So Vatasya Putrasya, the one who is lying on that banyan leaf is such a beautiful Bala Mukunda. Um, Sam Samskritya Lokan. He is the one who has actually eaten all the worlds, that kind of Bala Mukunda. So let me remember this Bala Mukunda. So, uh, now the sage actually sees that beautiful Bala Mukunda. He goes there, he is admiring this little boy and this little boy takes a deep breath inside. And when the boy is breathing in, the sage actually enters into the body of the baby. Now he goes inside and he is astonished by what he sees because he is able to see the entire universe there, not just one universe. He is able to see crores on crores of such universe inside the um, stomach of the baby. He is able to see the sky, he is able to see the water, he is able to see the dilange that is happening now. He is also able to see the beautiful river that is beside his ashram, his own ashram and he meditating in that ashram. All this happens in one small part of his body. So the sage is now not understanding what is happening here. He is contemplating on what, what is happening. He is able to see all the time, the kala, the yugas, the kalpas, everything is visible there. So the sage is wonderstruck. At this point, the boy actually breathes out and the sage comes out. He is now able to see the banyan tree outside. He is able to see the water, everything in the pralaya jala. And whatever he saw prior to entering the child's body is now visible here. So uh, he is wonderstruck. When he is just thinking like this, the little boy vanishes. So does the tree. So does the Dilanj and he is able to see himself in his ashram sitting there in the meditative pose and the beautiful river beside him. So he now understands that aha, everything is but a Leela of the Lord. He has given me this Ascharya vision just because I requested him and he appreciates the Lord for the greatness that he has seen. So this little boy is actually uh, sucking his thumb. Um, in his mouth. So that was the beautiful vision that Markandeya saw. So now the sage is asking um, uh, the Lord, why are you actually licking the thumb in your mouth? And the Lord says that, you know, all my devotees want to have a taste of the water that comes, that touches my feet. So I want to know what is the taste of that water and hence I am attempting to taste it for myself. So the post, we would have seen a lot of these uh, vigrahas where we see a beautiful Vatapatra on top of it, a little baby Krishna lying down, sucking his thumb. That is the beautiful vision that uh, sage Markandeya had. So whenever we see that image, we can recollect this beautiful vision of Markandeya Maharishi and the very name Adi Deva. Because here we understand that because everything is in the stomach of the Lord and everything is inside him during the dilanj, it just comes out in a magnificent form because of a sankalpa. So he does all this as a sport. Therefore, he is Adi Deva and this sage experienced it. That is what um, 
Arjuna is explaining here, many sages have told with authority that, Hey Lord Krishna, you are the Adi Deva. So Adi Deva is none other than you. And this has been established by all the rishis and you yourself have also established it to me. So I have no questions about it. Now again in the 11th chapter, 38th sloka, Tvamadi Deva Purusha Puranaha Tvamasya Vishwasya Param Nidhanam Veta si vedyam cha param cha dhama, tvayatatam vishva mananta rupa. So whatever we explained as Adi Deva, Arjuna is telling, I have no question that you are Adi Deva. During the 10th chapter, he understood that Lord Krishna was none other than Adi Deva. In the 11th chapter, Arjuna is having this beautiful vision, this beautiful Vishwarupa Darshana, where he re-emphasizes what he mentioned earlier, saying that you are Adi Deva. Now I am having it Pratyaksham, I am seeing it in front of my own eyes. Earlier, Markandeya Maharishi saw it. All the other sages established it. You told it. At that point itself, I was very clear that you are Adi Deva. But now, given this beautiful vision of Vishwarupa Darshana, what more can I ask? Hey Krishna, Tvam Adi Deva, you are the Adi Deva. I understand that completely. I am able to realize it completely. So by mentioning this, Arjuna is helping us understand that Lord Krishna is Adi Deva. And this Adi Deva is so easily accessible to us. You know, when Mother Eshoda wanted Lord Krishna to open his mouth and reveal whether he had eaten mutt, Lord Krishna opened his mouth and showed the entire universe to her. So he shown it to uh, sage uh, Markandeya, he shown it to mother. In spite of all these greatness, he actually went and he got caught as a thief who was stealing butter, right? So such is the easy accessibility of the Lord. So let's remember the great Adi Deva who is so accessible to us, who is there within us, who does everything with his sankalpa. So let's recite Adi Deva. Devaya Namaha. Let's recite Lord Krishna's names and be blessed. Madhava Chuda Krishna Hare Rishi Kesha Keshava Govinda Vasudeva Bhagavan Janardana Madhava Chuda Krishna Hare Rishi Kesha Keshava Govinda Vasudeva Bhagavan Janardana